Hello everyone, welcome to Fantasy Recaps Family. Today I will show you a legal drama film from 2021 titled Jai Bim. This movie portrays a true incident that happened in the early 90s. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens with some policemen standing outside a central jail. Prisoners were released from there after the completion of their punishment time. The policemen allowed upper caste people to go home and took the people of scheduled tribes to charge false cases on them to close unfinished cases. The tribal people cried and pleaded with the policemen to leave them, but they were forcibly arrested, since there is no one there to fight for their rights. The movie focuses on the tribe people named Irula's tribe. It is a scheduled tribe in South India. The whole tribe doesn't have ration cards or a permanent place to stay. They are living in a small hut under a hill. They were not allowed to live inside the village due to untouchability. No one cares about them. Their main job is to catch rats and snakes from farming lands and other field works in the village for a very low pay. Their children were not educated properly. They don't get the opportunity to join a school since they don't have a community certificate or voter ID. The so-called upper community people around them don't give any respect to them. They don't even treat them like humans. There was a small family in this tribe with three members. He is Raja Kanu. She is his wife, Sengeni. They have a five-year-old daughter. The main aim of Raja Kanu was to build a brick house and make his wife as its owner. Even though they have no money, Raja Kanu and his family are living happily with their community people. One day that village's president called Raja Kanu to catch the snake which entered into his house. Raja Kanu went there and searched for the snake. While searching, Raja Kanu found the president's wife's earring under a closet and returned it to her. He also saw inside the closet where the president used to put his money and jewels. President scolded his wife since she left the closet unlocked. Finally, Raja Kanu found the snake in the storage room. President gave him money for his work. Raja Kanu refused to get money for the favor since the president's wife comes from his village. Hearing this, president's wife insulted him, saying he is not part of the village since he belongs to a scheduled tribe, and both of them went out of town in their car. Raja Kanu got disappointed and returned to his house. It's almost night. Mithra, a social activist girl from Communist Party, took a basic class for Raja Kanu and his tribal people, since they don't know how to read and write. Mithra tirelessly tried many times to get community certificates and voter ID for the people, but she couldn't succeed due to irresponsible behavior of government officers and the village president. Raja Kanu didn't get any job in that village, so he planned to go outside that village to work in a brick kiln, so that he could earn more to raise their kids happily. Sengeni pleased him to take her with him, but Raja Kanu refused since she was pregnant and went there after giving the advance payment he got from the brick kiln to her. Though Raja Kanu missed his wife, he worked hard in the kiln. Sengeni led her life with her daughter, thinking about her husband. Days gone, the president called the police, saying his money and jewels in the closet were stolen when he went out of town. A sub-inspector named Guru Murthy and two other policemen with their forensic team came there and investigated the president's house. President's wife said she is suspecting Raja Kanu, since he saw the closet with money and jewels when he came to catch the snake. Guru Murthy promised that he will find the culprit. Days gone, President pressured Guru Murthy to find his jewels as early as possible. So Guru Murthy and his policemen went to that hill area and inquired Sengeni about the whereabouts of Raja Kanu. She said he went out of town for work, but Guru Murthy attacked her brutally and pulled her to the jeep. He also arrested Raja Kanu's three relations in the name of inquiry and took them to the police station. Guru Murthy tortured them. He beat them like animals and asked about Raja Kanu. One of the policemen tried to misbehave with the women. They tortured them continuously. The next day, Raja Kanu came to their village to see his wife and daughter. Police came there. 
They arrested him and released the two ladies. Guru Murthy and his mates continuously tortured Raja Kanu and his two relations asking them to confess that they steal the jewels. Raja Kanu refused. Sengeni and Mithra went to meet a lawyer named Chandru. Chandru is a very brilliant young lawyer and activist who fights continuously for tribal people's rights. Chandru asked Sengeni to describe what happened without overstate or understating anything. Sengeni told him how the police tortured them and what happened in a week before. One policeman came to Sengeni's house and told her that her husband and her two relatives escaped from the prison. From that day, Sengeni and Mithra searched for them, but they didn't get any information about them. Mithra, with the help of the Communist Party leader, asked the police to reinvestigate the case. An investigation officer reinvestigated the case and submitted the report saying three of them escaped to the nearby state. Mithra said they asked many lawyers to file a case in court, but all of them refused since they have no money and scheduled tribes. Chandru read the case files. The report said while police were sleeping, three of them escaped from there and went to a hospital, and then went to a medical shop to get treatment for their wounds and escaped. The report also said that the doctor, medical shop owner, and the tea shop owner were eyewitnesses. Chandru was confused about where to start the case, so he asked Sengeni to file habeas corpus petition in the high court so that they could search for Rajakanu. Sengeni filed the case. The judges asked Chandru to explain the case. Chandru described Rajakanu's disappearance and said that this investigation officer's report can be faked, and asked permission to cross-examine the eyewitnesses. Judges accepted and postponed the case hearing. Chandru went himself to Rajakanu's village, and also went to the police station with Mithra to verify whether the report is true or fake. Chandru found that the hospital is two kilometers away from the police station on the east side, and the medical shop is three kilometers away from the police station on the west side, so they can't be in both places like in the report. In the next hearing, Chandru proved the eyewitnesses are fake, by saying what he found to the judges. Judges accepted his argument and punished the investigation officer and the eyewitnesses. They ordered the police to reinvestigate the case and to submit the report in seven days. In the next hearing, Advocate General took the opposite side and introduced a new eyewitness, who is the owner of a rice mill where one of Rajakanu's relations worked. He said that they called him a week before and informed him that they escaped from the police station and went to the nearby state, and he also reported this to Sengeni already. It seems Sengeni and Mithra hid it from Chandru, so he doesn't have a point to argue. Advocate General said that this case has been filed with some ulterior motive to claim compensation, and requested the judges to dismiss the case. Chandru requested the judges that he need some more time to prove their side. They granted the time. Chandru shouted at Sengeni and Mithra asking why they hid the truth. Mithra said they thought it may be fake, since her relations doesn't know any alphabet or numbers to read or write, so there is no chance to make a phone call. Chandru checked the call record of that rice mill owner on that particular day and tracked the phone number. It was a phone booth number on a hill estate area. Chandru, Mithra, and Sengeni went to that place and searched the whole estate, but they didn't find them. There was a shop near the phone booth. When they inquired there, that shop owner recalled that day and said, three policemen from your state came there with two tribal peoples and did a phone call. He also came to court as a new eyewitness, and identified Guru Murthy and his two fellow men are the policemen who called in that booth. Chandru cross-examined Guru Murthy, and he accepted that they made fake phone calls to the rice mill owner. Chandru said the cops have repeatedly foul-played this case, and requested the judges to hand over the case to CBI. Judges said CBI is not necessary and asked Chandru to suggest a new investigating officer. Chandru suggested a sincere policeman named Peru Malsami. Judges issued the order and asked Peru Malsami to take over the case. On the other side, Advocate General shouted at the three policemen to say what really happened. They revealed that during inquiry, 
Gurumurthy kicked Raja Kanu with his boots and Raja Kanu died there. So they took his body to the state border and threw it there and made it look like an accidental death. Before starting the investigation, Chandru took Perumalsami to the people of Irula's tribe to make him realize how police torture tribal people to accept false cases. Perumalsami ordered a team to search for them in the nearby state, but they didn't find them. Chandru said they may be arrested by charging false cases in some other police station. Peru Malsami accepted and searched them in every jail and police station. They searched in all police stations inside the state border, but they couldn't find them. So they went to search in a nearby police station in nearby state limit. There they found an accident death case in which the victim was unidentified and buried by police themselves. By looking at the photos taken by forensic officers, they found it's Raja Kanu. And simultaneously, they found Raja Kanu's relations in a nearby sub-jail where Guru Murthy previously worked. Raja Kanu's relations said that on that night, Raja Kanu went unconscious. So the police separated them from Raja Kanu and took them in a van and put them here. The doctor who did autopsy on the body said that he found chili powder in the body's eyes and he died due to broken ribcage bones. It seems police put chili powder in Raja Kanu's eyes to check whether he's alive or not. Chandru connected the dots and understood that Raja Kanu died in lockup and the police tried to make it look like an accident. He also proved it in the court by showing the photos taken by forensic officers which show the van's tire marks and shoe marks of three policemen in the accident area. By his investigation, Peru Malsami found that the three policemen caught the real thief who robbed the jewels, but they shared the jewels and money between them and planned to charge the false case on Raja Kanu. At the end of this case, Chandru won his argument with the help of Peru Malsami and requested the judge to give half ground land on the center part of that village and 300 grand money to Sen Geni. Judges accepted and did the same, and also ordered to give 200 grand for Raja Kanu's relations who suffered. They accused the three policemen and punished them. Sen Geni got justice for her husband's death. The movie ends with Sen Geni entering into her newly built concrete house with his two children. Thank you for watching, guys. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll see you in another interesting movie. Till then, take care.